Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. Well, this week's Screen of the Week starts off with a question. Personally, I think it's a trick question, but the question is, shouldn't sales growth be better than earnings growth? Kevin Matris, head of our research wizard department and top stock screener here at Zach's, has the answer, I'm sure. He wasn't telling anyone until just right now when we started rolling on this piece. Um, I would kind of think initially, uh, looking at it on the surface, that the two go together. You can't have one without the other. Very true. No trick question. The answer is, yeah, you do want to see your sales growth be better than your earnings growth. Of course, you want to see earnings growth be good as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can only cut costs and trim the budget so much. Eventually, you need to see robust sales in order to fuel those earnings. Otherwise, they're going to dry up. Now, with earnings season winding down, it's never too early to start planning for the next earnings season. Mm -hmm. This past earnings season was kind of interesting because earnings growth, I think, uh, was down sharply. I think earnings growth was down on a year-over-year -year basis by 35%, but roughly two-thirds of those companies that have already reported actually beat expectations and showed positive surprises. What's interesting, though, is that the, the companies that were rewarded were simply the companies that didn't screw it up. If you were able to not screw it up and not paint too dour of a picture moving forward, your stock price was rewarded. If, uh, if you did screw it up and you disappointed the market, came in underneath expectations, your stock was, was really dismantled. Um, but uh, so I think now it's, it's important to start looking at the companies who are really, really showing true growth rates. Coming in with not that bad of numbers anymore is not going to cut it moving forward. Well, a lot of companies in this Q1 earnings season missed on revenues, but beat on earnings, right? Right. You know, a lot of companies, uh, they, they beat because they were cutting costs. They were really tightening up their ship, and that shows good management decisions. Uh, but again, um, you know, you cannot do that at the expense of sales. Sales is the, the driving factor for any companies. If, uh, if your sales are drying up, your earnings are going to dry up. Now, again, you can't see sales at the expense of margin. That doesn't work. Uh, but again, it is important that your sales growth is robust. That is the lifeblood of a company. And I believe sales are going to have to be the metric to ride to the rescue this next earnings season. Again, you cannot get there. You cannot always hit your numbers by cutting costs. You have to see the driving force, which is sales. And again, if your sales growth isn't rising, earnings won't either. And somewhere in here, there's a screen about all of this, right? That is right. Uh, in this week's screen, I'm looking for companies where the sales growth, indeed, like we're talking about, where the sales growth is increasing more than your earnings growth. So the screen starts off by looking at quarterly sales growth being greater than zero. I want positive sales growth on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. The next item is I want the quarterly EPS growth also to be greater than zero. Once again, positive growth, quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. The main item that we're talking about is next. I want the quarterly sales growth, Q0 over Q-1, to be greater than the quarterly EPS growth. Again, I'm looking for stocks whose sales growth have increased more than their earnings. This is showing top-line growth, very important, which also means there is less chance for gimmicks at earnings season. Then we round the screen off uh, by looking at these next three items. I want the last quarter sales surprise to be greater than or equals to zero. I want to see sales topping analysts' expectations. Same thing for the uh, EPS surprises as well. I want it to be greater than or equals to zero. Beating on the top number and beating on the bottom line number as well, two very important things. And then lastly, I want the Zach's rank to be less than or equals to three. No sales, no strong sales, only buy strong buys and holds. How many stocks came through this week? You know, it's interesting. Uh, these are very, very strict uh, criteria. Only 27 companies came through, and we have five of them right here. Uh, you've got Axis Technologies, The Buckle, Dolby Laboratories, Universal Display, and The Perfect World. All of these companies look as if they are set and they are on target to get the job done again next quarter. 
to me, 27 sounds like a respectable number. Well, out of 10,000 stocks, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but what do I know? I'm just the media guy. I do know that if you want to see more of the stocks that have come through this week's screen that Kevin has prepared, go to Zacks.com's homepage and click on the headline right next to Kevin's picture. That'll be this headline that takes you to the text version of this particular screen of the week. You know, Kevin uses the research wizard backtesting tool and software tool. It's very powerful, and he uses it for all of the screens that he achieves on Screen of the Week. And you can use it, too. And if you want to find out how you can use it, how you can obtain a copy of it, just go to zax.com forward slash research wizard. It'll give you all the details. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.